सर श्रुता शाह आई एम इंस्ट्रक्टर फॉर द सब्जेक्ट कंप्लीट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंड आर्किटेक्चर इन दिस सब्जेक्ट वी हैव स्टार्टेड यूनिट टू दैट इज बेसिक कंप्लीट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंड डिजाइन इन दिस यूनिट वी आर गोइंग टू सी टुडे द टॉपिक दैट इज इंस्ट्रक्शन साइकिल एंड रेजिस्टर रेफरेंस इंस्ट्रक्शन सो लेट मी फर्स्ट स्टार्ट विद द इंस्ट्रक्शन साइकिल अ प्रोग्राम रिसाइडिंग इन द मेमोरी यूनिट ऑफ अ कंप्यूटर इज कंसिस्टिंग ऑफ द सीक्वेंस ऑफ द इंस्ट्रक्शन In the basic computer, each instruction cycle is consisting of the following phases, like fetching the instruction from the memory, second thing, decoding the instruction, third thing, reading the effective address from the memory if uh, your instruction has been used with indirect addressing, fourth thing, the execution of the instruction. So all of your instruction will be consisting of these four tasks, like fetch, decode, read effective address, then the execute instruction. Okay. After the fourth step, this control goes back to step one to fetch, decode, and execute the next instruction. And this process will continue unless the hold instruction is encountered. Okay. So this is the basic task when you are executing your program. So this is the instruction cycle. How you can represent your instruction? First thing, your at the starting, your sequence counter will be Z, as we have discussed in last session also. That at the end, your sequence counter is going to be Z. So first, in starting, your sequence counter will be like zero. Then you will first have to fetch the instruction. Okay, so. where is your instruction stored your instruction is stored inside the memory and the address at which location you have stored your instruction is inside the program counter so you have to first fetch the location that is given by the program counter at that location you have stored your instruction so first of all what you have to do at the timing signal t0 first task of our instruction execution is fetching the instruction then we will decode the instruction then we will calculate the effective address and then we will execute the instruction so our first task for any instruction cycle is the fetching instruction and for fetching you will require the instruction location where you have stored the instruction and that is in the program counter so first task will be storing the content of the program counter into address register so that you can access the data from that location that is stored your address register okay so first thing will be uh, storing the program counter into the address register that is going to be completed at the timing signal t0 at the timing signal t1 you will store the content that is given by this address register to the ir register and second thing you will increment the program counter by 1 so that you can next time you can uh, access your next instruction okay so this is your fetching task you will complete at timing signal t0 and t1 after fetching we have to decode this instruction so this decoding task is going to be completed at t2 timing signal okay so for decoding you have to provide this 3 bit of your operation code you have stored whole your instruction 16 bit in the ir register and from that ir register you have to check 12 13 and 14 bit okay so this 12 13 and 14 bit are decoded and according to that decodition d0 to d7 from this d0 to d7 one control signal is generated okay and second thing you have to provide this address address of your opram that is stored in instruction register from bits 0 to 12 into the address register so that task is also going to be completed over this timing signal and you have to also check for the direct addressing mode or indirect addressing mode so for that your 15th bit that is going to be stored into i bit okay so at t3 timing signal you are going to complete in three tasks first one is decoding the operation code bit that is 12 13 and 14th bit second thing storing the address that is provided by this your instruction into the ar register that is stored as a ir 0 to 11 bit and checking the direct or indirect addressing bit by checking i bit or you can say ir 15th bit okay so after this t2 timing signal you have generated d0 to d7 any of this one control signal now next we we have already decoded that if it, this instruction is a uh, memory reference instruction or register reference or io reference instruction because here if your 
And D0 to D6 are generated. That means you have used some memory reference instruction. And if it is D7 bit is generated, then you have to check for the i bit. If i bit is 0, then your resistor reference instruction is there. And if i bit is 1, then you have used the IO reference instruction. Okay. Here, just you have find out that whether you have used this memory reference instruction or IO reference instruction or resistor reference instruction. You have not yet cleared which instruction is this. Okay. So, you have just find out which instruction or which type of instruction is that. Okay. After this task, you have to check whether this D7 bit is generated or other control signals are generated. If it is D7, then it is your resistor reference or IO reference instruction is there. And if it is not D7, then it is memory reference instruction is there. Okay. So, first check for the D7 bit. If it is 1, then you have to check for the I bit. That is for resistor reference or IO reference. If I bit is 1, then that means your instruction is of IO reference and if I bit is 0, then your instruction is of resistor reference instruction. Okay. So, for resistor reference or IO reference instruction at T3 timing signal, your instruction is going to be executed and at the end of the execution of your instruction, you have to put sequence counter to 0 so that you can start your next instruction. Okay. So, this task is going to be completed for your resistor reference or IO reference instruction and for that your condition is that your D7 bit is 1 and if your I is 1 then your IO reference instruction is there and if I is 0 then your resistor reference instruction is there and for this execution you will require this T3 timing signal. Okay. This is for your resistor reference or IO reference instruction. Next, we have to check for the memory reference instruction. So, if there is no D7 signal is generated, that means there will be D0 to D6 signal will be generated and that means you have to represent or you have to execute some memory reference instruction. And for this memory reference instruction, your addressing mode can be direct or indirect. So, that you have to first check for the i bit. If your D7 bit is 0, that means your memory reference instruction is there, then you have to check for the i bit. If i bit is 0, that means you have used the direct addressing mode and if your i bit is 1, that means you have used the indirect addressing mode. So, for indirect addressing mode, you have to access your actual address. Okay, So, that address is stored at the location that is given by the AR resistor. So, you have to first store the content of memory location given by this AR resistor to the AR resistor. So, that your actual address is now stored in the address resistor. Okay. And for the direct addressing mode, you have to do nothing. Okay. At T3 timing signal, for indirect addressing, you have to access your actual address. For indirect addressing, no task is going to be completed over this time. Okay. And after the end of this T3 timing signal, your T4 timing signal will be there. And at the T4 timing signal, your execution of instruction is going to be done. Okay. So, for your memory reference instruction, you will require one extra timing signal that is T4 timing signal. And after end of this T4 timing signal, you have to do sequence counter Z so that your next instruction's execution can be started. Okay. So, by this way, for instruction fetching, we have to use this D0 and D1 timing signal. For decoding, we have to use this T2 timing signal and for execution, we are going to be using this T3 and T4 timing signal depending upon your instruction. If D7 bit is 1, that means your resistor reference instruction is there or IO reference instruction is there. For the decision, you have to check the i bit. If 0, that means your resistor reference instruction. If it is 1, that means your IO reference instruction is there. If D7 bit is 0, that means your condition is like D7 depth. Then you have to check for the i bit. If i bit is 1, that means you have used the memory reference instruction with indirect addressing. And if i bit is 0, then you have used the IO uh, memory reference instruction with direct addressing. Okay. And at the end of each and every uh, cycle or at the end of each and every instruction cycle, you have to put sequence counter as a 0 so that you can start the next sequence for instruction. Okay. So, this is your instruction cycle. And here we can summarize it like this. If your D7 bit is Z1, the instruction must be a resistor reference or IO reference instruction. And if D7 is 0, the operation code must be one of the seven values that is 000 to 110 and that is specifying your memory reference instruction. 
Then the control then in, uh, inspect the value of the first bit of the instruction which uh, now available in the flip flop i. If the d7 is 0 and i is 1 then we have the memory reference instruction with the indirect addressing and it is then necessary to read the effective address from the memory and the, uh, the three instruction types are subdivided into the separate path and the selected operation is activated with the clock transition associated with the timing signal t3. Okay, so by this way we can uh, use this instruction cycle. Uh, this also can be symbolized like this for d d7 dash i t3 that is uh, at this time that is you have used we can also symbolize this by this way like if d7 dash i and t3 that means your d7 bit is 0 and i is 1 and t3 timing signal is generated that means your instruction is of memory reference kind of and i bit is 1 that means it is indirect addressing so you have to store this address, uh, actual address into address register by this operation of AR given memory content of AR. Okay. Uh, if your condition is like D7 dash T3 I dash, that means you your instruction is of memory reference and having direct addressing. That means you are going to uh, you are not going to complete any task right now. Then if your instruction has a, has a timing or control like D7 I dash T3 that means D7 is 1 and I is 0 and D3 timing signal is that that means you have to execute some register reference instruction and if it is like D7 R T3 that means you have to execute some IO reference instruction okay when the memory reference instruction with I is 0 is encountered it is uh, not necessary to do anything since the effective address is already in the AR register okay as this we have already seen. So, by this way we can use this instruction cycle. Here in the register reference or input uh, output instruction can be executed with the click associated with the timing signal T3 and after the execution uh, of the instruction sequence counter is uh, clear to 0 and the control return to the fetch phase with T0 equals to 1 and so that you can access your next instruction. So, by this way we can use uh, the instruction cycle. In this instruction cycle, your four tasks are completed like fetching, then decoding, then calculating the effective address and then lastly execution of the instruction. And for this task, we are going to use five timing signals. These are like T0, T1, T2 up to T4. Okay. Next, we are going to see the resistor reference instruction. In this resistor reference instruction, you can uh, we have already seen that for this, we have D7 bit equals to 1. And each control function needs this relationship like D7 is 1, i bit is a 0 and T3 timing signal is generated. Okay. So, for any of this instruction, your decoding or you can say fetching and decoding uh, task will be same. That means you will fetch the instruction in T0 and T1 timing signal and decode the instruction in T2 timing signal. That task will be same for all, all of this type of instruction. Okay. For this register reference instruction, the difference will be there for the D7 bit and I bit. If T3 timing signal is generated and D7 uh, control signal is 1 and I bit is 0, that means your condition is like D7 I dash T3. That means you have to represent or you have to execute some register reference instruction. And for this resistor reference instruction, your this D7 bit is like 1, 1, 1. Okay. And uh, for this, we can see that your fetching decoding is completed in T0 and T1 timing, T0, T1 and T2 timing signal and execution is going to be done in this T3 timing Okay. And so for this, uh, we have uh, the control is like D7 I dash T3. Okay. So, after that we have to check for the bit, which bit is generated as we can see over here for this resistor reference instruction and your operation code is fixed that is 0, 1, 1, 1 but your address bit will represent some of the operation. At, at the for any of your reference instruction from this 12 bit any of one bit will be what? The resistor reference instruction 
any of one bit from this 12 bit will be 1 and this that one bit will represent which operation you are going to be performing okay if it is 11 bit is 1 then your CLA instruction is there if it is 9 bit is 1 then your CMA instruction is there and so on. so if we represent this bits by B11, B10, B9, B8 and so on so our condition will be like if your D7 bit is generated D7 control is generated ith bit is 0 that means D7 i dash T3 timing signal is there that means T3 and your B11 bit is 1. So your condition will be like D7 I dash T3 B11 okay for your CLA instruction. If your instruction is like CMA then your condition will be like D7 I dash T3 and B9 okay so and so on. for all of your uh, resistor reference instruction you have particular one bit as a 1 and we have represent it like B bit okay. So for CLA instruction, you have R B11 condition. Here R represent B7 I dash T3. That is combined condition. That is required for all of your resistor reference instruction. For CLA instruction, your condition will be R B11. If this condition is fulfilled, then you have to perform this task. That is clearing the accumulator. So that storing zero into accumulator. Okay. If your condition is like R B. 10, then you have to perform C and E instruction. In this instruction, your E flag is clear. Okay. If your uh, condition is like R B 9, then you have to complement the accumulator. If condition is R B 8, then you have to complement the E flag. If it is R B 7, then you have to circularly shift right. In this shifting, accumulator's content is shifted right side. Then E flag is stored into 15th position of the accumulator, and the uh, E uh, zero bit is stored in the E flag. Okay. Similarly for left shifting, if your uh, condition is like RB5, RB if your condition is like RB5, then you have to increment the content of accumulator by 1 and so on for all of this instruction. So for this, you have to check the condition R that is B7 I dash T3 and you have to check the bit which bit is generated and depending upon that condition you have to perform some micro operation and that is your instruction okay so by this way you can use this resistor reference instruction here the first seven are the resistor reference instruction to perform clear complement circular shift and the increment micro operation on the accumulator or E resistor. The next four instruction used to skip of the next instruction in the sequence when the condition is satisfied and the skipping of the instruction is assumed by the incrementing program counter by 1. The condition control statement must be recognized at the path of the control condition and there is 0 when AC is equals to 0. Okay. Uh, the SOT instruction clears the start stop flip flop as and stops the sequence counter from counting to restore the operation of the computer the start stop flip flop must be set manually okay so by this way you can use this resistor reference instruction okay here total 12 instructions are there and for all of this instruction particular one bit in the address field is one okay so here we are ending our today's session if you have any query then you can contact me